Welcome back everyone, Mudford and Jeremiah here. And we're tearing apart his LT80. Uh, from our previous video, you probably know about our front suspension, the Elka shocks, and the um, modifying the control arm mounts. Now we're tearing deep into it, and we have the pipe off, and we have the plastic off. And what we're doing is we're tearing this whole engine out, and we're sending it out to Jack. I'll have to put his name maybe on the screen here. I can't remember his name. He's known as LT80 on all the uh, ATV forums, and he builds these engines, and he builds them well. So we're shipping it off to him. We're going to get the whole race package done on it. And then while it's out, we're going to get new plates from TXERA Tech, or however you pronounce it. And then we're also getting an Elka shock for the rear. We're doing all that while we have the engine out all at the same time. Also, switching, when we put it in, we're not putting the stock pipe back in. Because our plates are going to move this shock back, and then our stock exhaust won't fit. And there aren't really many good options for exhaust. We're going to have to go with the DG exhaust that comes straight out the back. getting these uh, nerf bars off he had to have these for motocross racing now we got we just want to get them out of the way here move your hand move your hand for a second there. Jeremiah is working on getting the uh, foot peg assemblies off now and I've got the chain fall hooked on the back here. I'm going to start pulling the shock out and disconnecting the brake because we're going to pull the whole motor out and the rear axle with it. Pulling the cover off the engine now, we want to see where the wiring goes uh, for the electrical down into the, uh, that makes the juice. I think it's down on that side. We need to get that off before we can pull the motor out. We've got the carburetor mostly disconnected. I just got to unhook it from the air box. We've got to take the main bolt out, skid plate off. We're just going to keep uh, working at it here, and then we're going to hopefully be able to pull this motor right out of Okay, we got our first look at the motor. Just a little air-cooled two-stroke here. And we just have a couple more things to take off, and we'll hopefully, we got to figure this right there, that wiring. These are the wires for the generator or alternator whatever you call it on this I just had to take them apart up here feed them down through and we'll just send that out with the motor there's no disconnect down here by the engine I think we've got everything disconnected down this ground was a bugger what we ended up using what we ended up using for the Phillips screw was this huge bit here and then it's with uh, uh, impact so you just so you hit it and it spins it backwards a little bit but we got it right out with this we're just taking the last bolt out on the shock and Jeremiah will pull the shock out and then there you go, there you go. Hold it still. Hold your side still, please. Okay. Okay, pull it right out. And I got the wire disconnected, so hopefully we can get this engine to turn this way to get around this piece of frame here and then we can just back the wheels up and get it to slide right okay, out. It slid right out here on the left side I still kinda got it set in here on buckets got the frame on a chain fall I need Jeremiah to feed the wire through right here 
Can you feed that wire through, Jeremiah? Yes. Yep. So it doesn't get caught and broken. Throw it over here to me. We got the motor out. The motor actually pivots and is part of the suspension on this. I'm going to take this off these buckets. And we actually got to pull the plates off because we got to send that part in. Now we're taking the plates off of the motor. The plates that hold the axle to the motor. We're separating it so that we can send out just the motor. Not sure how many bolts are going to hold this. It looks like there's at least two or three. At least two on each side. Possibly three. like three down, two more down here. And then across the top here, this was holding the muffler on. And it also went through the plate, so it looks like four bolts total on each side. So here's the motor. We got it separated from the Rear axle, these are the plates that it bolts to. Here are the plates. So the engine, which in the LT80 is part of the suspension, bolts right here with these four. And then the axle bolts in with these three. So what we need to do is we need an inch more between these bolts and these bolts. So we just need it to be a little bit longer to kick the axle that much further back so that our new shock will fit in. So I'm going to see if I can't get somebody to make me up some plates. Jeremiah and I are going to try to get the motor at least in bolted in somewhat tonight so that I can work on the suspension when I get time. And I'll do that since I have to do some welding for a shock mount in the rear. Jeremiah is going to hopefully do everything else himself.
going to show you all the mundane of putting the engine back together in and hooking the rear axle back on. Uh, probably because I took it apart months and months ago and I'm not going to remember how it goes. And I'm probably going to have about three different tries on everything. I'm going to have it in and out. So what I'm going to do is just show how I redesigned the rear shock mount back here for the Elka rear shock, which is a totally different mount. Here's what I came up with for the rear shock mount, the lower mount. I had to kick it back a little bit. You can see the original mount, and it's the opposite. It's the wrong style, too. It's made for a lower shock like this to sandwich that, and my new lower shock looks just like that at the bottom. So we had to make a bracket. So what I did was I extended it back past the end of the plates, and I welded a piece on, and then I just bolted it this piece here. Ouch, that's a little hot. I just finished welding this. So we bolted a piece there to the original shock mount, and then it comes out. And then it also ties into the other plate. It has to twist a little bit to make clearance, and then I had to do some grinding on it to make clearance for the brake cable, but it should be fine. And then I made another piece that went down and around and then back up and over to hold this new cobbled up exhaust. And if I end up not going with this exhaust and going with like a DG that only uses this mount, I can just cut this right there and it'll still be a strong lower shock. A couple mount. other things we had to do with bringing the plates back and making them longer was we had to extend the brake cable. So I just welded in another piece of threaded rod here to make this longer so it would still work. We had to put a new chain on it because our old chain obviously wasn't long enough. And this cover isn't going to work anymore because the distance is longer there so between the sprockets so that's going to have to come off. And another thing, I want to move this hole here. That way it'll put a little more spring tension on this um, chain tensioner here just to keep the chain a little bit tighter. Here. Pretty much got everything done. I painted the um, brackets that I made. The one that ties the frame has the exhaust mount on it to make it solid. The thing I have left to do is the skid plate. Because I did lengthen the uh, plates on the axle, I have to lengthen the skid plate for it. So it would probably be ideal to cut it here and lengthen it here, but that was kind of a pain. I don't think it's going to make a big deal. So I, let, I cut it right here, and I'm going to weld a piece of this steel in. That's the same amount, like just right around an inch is how I lengthen the plates. So I'm just going to weld that in there, and then hopefully the um, skid plate will bolt right back up. Okay, so here's the skid plate extended. I welded it on both sides. I flipped it over and got both of it. The only bad thing is I did get these a little hot. That one did burn a little bit. Now I just got to try fitting it. Probably going to slap a little bit of spray paint on it first so it doesn't rust right there where I welded. Here's the stock pipe that I kind of fabric cobbled together. And it did stick out a long ways and it's big and bulky. So what I ended up doing was finding a DG pipe which is basically the same shape but just smaller. And I found that used on eBay and I went ahead and bought that and put it on. So now we no longer need the bracket here. See that doesn't touch now. So I'm just going to cut this off right here at the shock, and this will just be a shock mount, not an exhaust mount anymore. And then the only thing we have left to do before the race is we need to do some clutch tuning. I talked to Jack Moore, the engine builder, and we've been having trouble taking off with it from a dead stop. It just does not want to go very good, and he said we need to do some fine tuning in the clutch. We're at with the quad. So I put the DG pipe on, sounded a lot better, 
but when I put it on, this was actually angled over more. So I flipped this spacer from, it was on the other side, over to this side to make the pipe come out more straight out the back. It may be a little crooked now, but it's a lot better than it was. And that's all well and good now. But now where it mounts on the engine up there is a little crooked. So it's leaking exhaust out the side there. So what I'm going to have to do is heat the pipe up right here and try to straighten that bend out just enough to get it to fit square on the engine. Okay, I messed up and didn't get that on film when I heated it, but I had the pipe off in my vise and heated it up right there all the way around. And I put a small, smaller pipe inside and bent it away from me that way just a little bit. And that was enough to make this fit flush now when the pipe is where I want it. So you can see the pipe is coming straight out the back now and everything's good. No exhaust leaks.